Morning and welcome to Gardening 365 59 The Brighton Lines. Special. And then we're going to start this week's episode with some uh, filming I did earlier in the week. Okay, so like I said, hopefully you enjoy the. Uh, this week's episode. So my wife just finished digging the second row of our early potatoes, uh, Charlotte's, and they're not bad at all. Now, to be quite honest, if they're as golf ball sized, for me, early potatoes are ready for picking. Some people leave them too long, they get too big, and they've already lost their taste. But that size, they're perfect tasting. Put them into a pan, boil them some fresh mint they are absolutely gorgeous but even more importantly now there is an opportunity to grow some more veg and what am I going to put in there some more leeks so if you've got space in your garden at this time of the year you're missing an opportunity get that garden filled up and now's the perfect time to start planting your winter root veg carrots leeks parsnips, turnips, and I could go on. Those are the leeks, and they're more than ready to go out. In fact, these could have been planted direct, even from seeds outside, but they just didn't have the space. So now I've got a little space, I'm taking advantage of it. All in now, and they've had at least a can of water, so uh, they've had the best start in life. Hopefully they'll do really good, and some supply us with some winter veg. And for every success, there's a disaster not far around the corner and the good news is all of my beetroot that I put in a couple of episodes ago I've taken but the birds have been munching so we need now to put some defence up to stop the birds so I'm going to net these over very shortly but there's an opportunity to plant a couple more lettuce I think the space is for three so I'll put three lettuce in very shortly the sun's come out now, it's now really nice and it's getting really warm on my back uh, here's my next little project. These are some of the tomatoes I grew about a month ago and all I did was got four slices of tomato and placed them in some compost and that was the outcome. Now these were delicious tomatoes we bought from Booker's uh, and I'm going to see if I can replicate that with some really late tomatoes. And 12 little tiny tomatoes and we're in the second week of July Will they mature? Will they grow tomatoes? Will they ripen? Watch this space, that's what Gardening 365 is all about. Me trying to challenge nature with some successes and also quite a few disasters as well. But keep watching. And as always, give them a good drink and then I'm going to put them back in the greenhouse. If you're watching and enjoying the video please subscribe and you'll never miss a future upload thank you and here's the first of my project jobs there's a pipe there now what we're hoping for very soon is for electricity to be brought down to the shed and what I want to do is put a pipe across there so we can take uh, electrical wires into the greenhouse and have electricity in the greenhouse as well now from my point of view what I want to do is cause the least amount of disturbance so when I finish the job I want it to look like I've hardly done anything there at all but there's a pipe underground. And I've created what looks like the channel tunnel. There's no train going through here, even so it's 59, what is going through here is pure electrification. Now 
people say to me, you're so lucky having the garden you've got and being able to grow such wonderful plants. That's the soil that we started with. It's virtually 100% clay and it really doesn't grow a lot of anything. So lots of horse muck, lots of homemade compost mixed in with this and it makes great growing soil and you've probably seen the results in our raised beds. And my mission for this job was to create as little disturbance as possible. Now when you look you can see where I've trod around a little bit but that's understandable with the soil as wet as it is at the moment. But I would say a week, less than a week, you wouldn't even know that pipe's there which is perfect for what I want next. And now from the other side I need to remove some of that soil so it's about four to six inches uh, deep so then I can put some concrete on there and as I've said previously then we can bring the tables in here and that's what this part of the greenhouse is for so digging that out very shortly temperature. I've been on holiday and it's cooler than that. But when I've been on holiday in places like Corbu. I've been by the pool drinking a beer at the time when it's been this hot or nearly this hot. And now I'm just working in the garden. In a greenhouse of all places. Dug it out now four to six inches and now what I'm going to do is just put some stone down and these are just stone that I've dug out of the garden like I always say nothing goes to waste and I'm just recycling them as hardcore and then at some point very soon I'll be putting the, uh, the concrete on top of this and now starting to put the concrete in and that's it concrete's in it needs to dry overnight and as I say once it's dry and we'll move that table probably 24 hours so this time tomorrow we can move it talking of which it's now 7 30 me and Claire started at uh, about 8 30 so we've been on the go 10 11 hours now so time for a rest so uh, see you tomorrow and still to come the results of this year's potato chip challenge a great success a total disaster and I'm really looking forward to showing you this bit. Homemade strawberry ice cream. Pureed strawberries out of the garden of course. Cream, milk, egg yolks all uh, cooked and mixed together. Notice I'm not very technical on this bit. And eat it back up again but make sure you don't let it boil because the eggs will scramble. We don't want that scrambled egg ice cream. Take it to 80 degrees and then let it cool for an hour. And the eggshells that was used for the ice cream, they're now in the greenhouse drying and basically they'll be crushed up and added to my compost mixture. Nothing goes to waste at this house. And talking of nothing goes to waste, this is the early glut of tomatoes. So with these, the ice cream's for the dessert and the tomatoes are gonna be for tomato soup for our starter onion, red pepper and lots of garden tomatoes and enough garlic to sink a battleship. No I'm joking this is totally optional garlic uh, add it as per the taste of the guests that you got coming. Uh, our guests are not really garlicky eaters so we're only going to go with that amount. I would if it was myself put at least twice as much as that in and we'll put that in the oven when we put the meat in first of all so we're saving energy that way. Uh, Wait till it goes uh, brown, black, gnarly, and that's the time then that you go to the next stage. And when it's cooled down, mix everything together, including the strawberries. And then what I'm going to do is put this into the deep breeze. But every hour, I'm going to uh, whisk it again, stop any ice forming. So it's really light and really creamy. That's the plan anyway. And set an alarm for one hour. And that gives me a chance to go outside and do a bit of gardening. 
and this is my entry for the potato chip challenge okay this is a potato that's been grown from just a little chip not the potato itself so if this doesn't work out i'm not going to show this bit of the video ever oh. We're going to get anything, nothing, nothing yet. Potatoes from not a potato. Wow. Wow. <laughs> More wows. <laughs> wow. That must be one of my gardening best achievements ever. Grown potatoes without even using a potato. And the potatoes are out, and the same container, same soil, has been used for six pack joy. And these are lovely. And the table's now been moved out into the new area for it. It's really pleased now because that's now growing space. And after one hour, whisk up again and repeat this for the first four hours. And this will stop ice crystals forming. And then straight back in the freezer. Perfect. And some real dark bits in there to give them some great flavour. And at this stage now, it goes into a liquidizer. And you need to uh, add some beef stock in, some homemade beef stock, into the mixture when you whiz it. And give it a good blitz. And bring to the boil and it's ready to serve. And that concludes this week's Gardening 365 59, the Brighton and special. And sorry, there have been one or two references to trains this week, but I haven't said Monty. Hello. Once. Okay, so hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, keep inviting your friends to Facebook. That 1,000 is getting very, very close now. I think we're about 11 away. And also, please go along to YouTube. And as we've said, please subscribe and please grow our channel together. It's been a pleasure and see you next time. Bye.